waiting for the oh, button. There it is. We are live. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hello, Lady Nancy. <laughs> hello, Lady Amy. So much to talk about today. <laughs> yeah. So welcome, everyone, uh, to Tea Across the Miles with Lady Amy and Lady Nancy. And uh, I am back from a trip to England, and I'm here to I'm here to report <laughs> to, to Lady Nancy. And we have teas to try. Courtesy yes. of Lady Nancy. Yes. And we still haven't talked coronation. So. Oh my gosh, you're right. There's so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be here till what time tonight? No. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. It's like, I guess I better call him to work and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, can't make it today. Well, um, should we get, let's jump in and get the teas going because it yes. is not English time, but it is 9.45. And if I don't have tea, like in another 18 minutes, I'm going to have a headache. So, gotcha. <laughs> but I want to show you that you came in. Is this the cutest box? Look at this. Oh, that is really cute. And it's double deckered. So you take the top or the bottom off and it had all the triangles in oh, it. Oh, nice. So they're there. just single layered. Yes. No, oh. well, yeah. Then there's one on the bottom too. So but if then, I take yeah, the yeah. Off, there's more. That's so awesome. Had, yeah. And it's this, um, who is this? It's the Great, Great British Tea. Yeah. Um, Highfield Cottage I, Tea. Yeah, Highfield Cottage Tea. Um, and it had um, English breakfast, um, afternoon, and um, chai and Earl Grey, your typical. Beautiful. The typical. So what did I send you? Did I send you English breakfast? Oh, so I'm a, yeah, so I have English breakfast, okay. I have chai, and I have uh, Earl Grey. Excellent. So I will start opening these little things. I just couldn't resist the darling little... Yeah, they're really, really Herman, cute. They're just so cute. But so did you buy them or did you get them as a gift? No, I bought them. So oh, okay. Tuesday morning has finally decided to close down, unfortunately. I know they have in many other places oh. across the country. Right. Um, they would have a cute selection. In fact, I also got this, which oh. would be crap, but the tin is adorable. So Yeah, it is tin. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm a sucker for anything with a Union Jack or, a you know, anything. Right. British well, on the front. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll show you the tea tins that I brought back <laughs> for myself. Oh, I can't wait. Um okay. how was the weather? Uh it was great. So I apparently brought sun with me. It was sunny almost every day. That's um, fantastic. Yeah, and I learned, I mean, it was still chilly, right? Like chilly for Floridian. Uh the high, I think was like 60 or 62 um but like so you'd like dress in layers and I'll, I'll get into always yeah I was like I'll get into my uh I don't know I'll say my annoyances <laughs> that I didn't used to have <laughs> towards London <laughs> an annoyance in England what? I know right yeah oh. um, Part of it, a part of it. Aside from the fact that they drive on the wrong side of the road, but yeah, go that's ahead. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I get. I walk to the wrong side of the car every time I have to get in someone's car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, um, yeah, but the okay, so you have to whatever wear layers, right? And you're like, and usually it's never like bare legs, so I'd wear a lot of tights and stuff, and um, because that was still usually better than jeans. And then you're out and about. And so between walking and different public transport, it gets rather warm, right? So then you're like hot, you know, these layers. That's one of the things I hate about winter here, or I should say up north, right, in the States, is that like you're bundled up and then you walk into a store and it's like an oven and you're just like, I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this was like a mild version of that. <laughs> And like, I realized like the underground is so loud. I forgot, I guess, just how loud it was and hot. And it's like, cause there's no air on them. And then it's just like the windows are, you know, uh, through the, on the ends of the train, right? So as you're driving, there's like a flow of air that way. But, and then the buses always seemed hot. And again, a lot of the, these complaints are probably specific to the fact that I was there when there was sun every day. So like I'd be on the bus, like not having to go too, too far but between like the 
stopping in traffic and whatever it'd take forever and then I'd just be like baking in the window and the sun right <laughs> it's so hot um so um yeah so anyway but when I went out to visit uh Sam at BNI in Horsham uh England he he mentioned this was early on in my trip and he mentioned like the sun's out today and I said yeah I was like but he said it in a way it wasn't like the way we talk about weather it seemed different and so I told him I go I was like yeah you're Claire kind of wrote me a thing before I left the flat yesterday because she had gone to work first it was like and she wrote this thing about like you know the sun's out today like kind of like it's gonna be a great day because the sun's out or whatever and I so he told me he's like yeah he goes well we British all we do is talk about the weather (laughs) he's like so he's like and especially if it's sunny so then when we got to his chapter because he picked me up from the train station at his meeting and I'm intru- being introduced to everyone and like everyone is talking about the sun <laughs> and the weather. And I was just like, this is, this is great. <laughs> and I think they're just genuinely not used to really sunny days or you know, it's, it's, unusual, yeah. you know, right, right. They're yeah. not. So it's like the second that there is sun, like all the parks are filled, like all the mm-hmm. green grass, everyone's laying out on the grass, even at lunch, like whatever. Yeah. Uh, I did that. I did do that one day. And um, now I did enjoy getting to wear, I'll say, I enjoyed getting dressed in the morning and like with my cute layers. Right. <laughs> but then by the end of the day, I'm just like, ah, and now it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> or if I was out long enough and get hot and then I go back to cool again because <laughs> the sun would go down. <laughs> so. can, I, can I say that? Um, so when we lived in Coronado um, and they would, it's an island and um, the fog would come in midday. A lot of days would come in over um, an area called Point Loma. And this mm-hmm. really, I don't want to call it mountainous, but it's kind of. Um, and so we, in the morning, we'd start off pretty, you know, you'd, you'd have on shorts, maybe a tank top, a light sweater jacket, something, flip flops. You carry that through the day. And by mid afternoon, you're going to jeans. And if you're going out at night, you're putting on a sweater, jeans, and boots. Oh so, my gosh. So, you know, unlike here, where I have like, these are my summer clothes and sure. winter clothes. You just had, you know, you got to use the entire span of your wardrobe in a day. Right. Because you know, you'd run the gamut from fall to, to winter that's with crazy. summer in between. You just never knew. So I, I mean, and I think that's, you know, kind of similar to what, what they're used to over there. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds like that was definitely more drastic what you experienced. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> but, it was interesting. I love that I could, you know, still wear a pair of boots at night. Um, Otherwise, well, that's true. Got warm, you know. Yeah, yeah. I say, did you feel like uh, you're in Downton Abbey where you had to get dressed for like every meal, <laughs> like you had to change outfits? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It was it, those special occasions when we would go out, but um, you know, sitting by a fire pit in mm-hmm. August at night, yeah, that yeah, was unusual because it just got cooler in the evening. So right. But um, I have heard, you know. Um, I had, I worked with a teacher who had, she said she had an English friend and the English friend would always tell her there's no such thing as bad weather. There's just bad clothing choices. So um, I think that's probably right up there with what you, you know, what you, what they live through every day. Right, right. So I'm adding my sugar. Oh, good, good thinking. So one of my show and tells that. Okay, glasses, 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 glasses. (laughs) All right. Oh, you got one of those, a tea timer. I did, but if you look closely at the colors, they're uh-huh. Fortnum and Mason colors because I bought this little thing at Fortnum and Mason. Oh, that's awesome. So black is a black tea, yes? Yeah, black is black tea, white's the white tea, and then the yeah, teal. Fortnum and Mason teal is green. Yeah, nice. and then it says time for tea. Nice. On the <laughs> Very cool. That was- that was cute. Um, I was like, well, I've always kind of wanted one of those since I saw them at a tea house once. And then like, and if I'm going to get one, I should probably get it from Fortnum. And I think absolutely so. <laughs> you know, if, if the king is not going to hand it to you himself, then that would be the I know. thing. So. I know. Yeah, someone at BNI this morning asked me, they're like, did you, uh, you know, did you get to meet with the king? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, well, it was crazy. I said, it was crazy. I tried to meet with Charles and Camilla and I said, but I'm, I was like, 
I mean, as a week after the coronation, their schedules should be freed up. Be freed up. <laughs> they, but they just couldn't make it work. <laughs> For Lady Amy of Scotland, yes. I know. <laughs> For um, Scotland landowner, Amy Mitchell. Right. <laughs> so speaking of them, so I got a coronation. Oh, I got to take my glasses on for these. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when show and tell them. Beautiful. <laughs> so coronation um, team. Love, love, love. Is that Fortnum and Mason? No. No. So I ended up not buying any of the tea from Fortnum and Mason because uh one price show the top again i'm sorry show the top again because your hand was over it when it wasn't sorry. flashing a little bit to the side because it's got a blur on it beautiful right. i do love his insignia i really i, I do, do. Love that. it's really nice it is and the uh oh, one of the one of claire's friends <laughs> made a really good point because every time i was talking about my tattoos and stuff and how i was like potentially i could get four in my lifetime and <laughs> And um, she was like, all I'll say is that just wait a minute to see how his reign goes. She's like, Elizabeth had like a solid 68 years under her belt before you got her on your arm. <laughs> I was like, fair point. <laughs> and then there for like a hot five minutes and you're ready to put some right, ink right. in your arm. Right, gotcha. right. Or he, gotcha. or he does something horrendous to get canceled. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> that's on you. <sighs> well, um, listen, if he if he is beheaded like his predecessor, you know, Charles right. the first, oh, then right? it makes for a really interesting tattoo over here. I mean, the, the that's possibilities true. are endless. That's true. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then I got, uh, oh, this one, where did I buy it? I think it's pretty yeah i was like this one's a royal blend it's just marking queen elizabeth's longest reigning monarch nice beautiful was that on clearance like half price <laughs> yeah it should have been it wasn't bad i was like i still have the price tags on them so where did i get these i feel like i got these at there was a buckingham palace gift shop i might have picked them up there okay like 9.95 yeah like pounds pounds yeah yeah so that's like as Good as you're gonna get, and then I got. Oh, this is the one I found at Harrods. So this is exciting. Harrods. <laughs> so it is Queen Elizabeth, and it's yeah. it's a platinum jubilee one. Nice. Now wait for it. Hold on. <laughs> Can you hear it at all? No, but I love the lid. I'm trying to hold up the microphone, uh -uh. That I think is my microphone. No, well, anyway, it's a, it's a little music. It's like a little music music box. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, and then it spins the picture around. Oh, neat. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, so there's that. And then almost done the show and tell. Oh, do we need to take our tea bags out? Well, mine are out. My, my tea's ready. Oh, got it. Okay. I was slow to pour mine. So. You're, you're all right. I got 13 and a half minutes before my headache kicks in. So. <laughs> okay. Well, we can start sipping on one of them. I and then. Huh? What you want? Yeah, you more, want to yeah, show more. and tell? Wait, well, we can yeah. try the English breakfast if you want. Yeah, I was like, why don't we start sipping on one so that, yeah. I want to say they're all very similar in color. The chai yeah. is slightly lighter, but yeah. Right. So I totally put them in and open them without paying attention to which one was which. <laughs> Uh-oh. So now I get- no, I think, You'll know when you taste it. Right? Yeah, I know. It's like, I think, and I feel like Earl Grey, I should definitely be able to smell. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a citrus to it. Yeah. And the, the chai, you can usually pick up the spice. Right. Mm, that's good going down. Okay. So anyway, we're doing um, breakfast first, right? Mm -hmm. So this was my one and only mug that I bought. Beautiful. So it's just pretty and it's- Is that the ER on it? Yeah, so it's basically the same as my tattoo. <laughs> it's And it's Queen Elizabeth, just like the- Nice. Painting dates, but I like the colors a lot. Yeah, um, of course. And I did not buy any teacups and saucers over there because even the cheapest ones I would find were just too pricey for me. Yes, <laughs> yes like, understood. I can't, I can't do it. No. Nope. <laughs> um, and so, uh, let's see. 
Oh wait, I need to add sugar. That's what's happening. Um, and then we went to, oh, well, so the tea lady, Jane Malian of English Cream Tea Company, uh, she gave me her little book that's called Scone or Scone. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, it's the essential guide to British afternoon tea. And uh, what I love is she like wrote a little message in the front for me, but she refers to me as Poppet. I forgot that she calls me oh. Poppet. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but so this is really fun. And apparently she's like all on TikTok now and like do it and her, her husband. So I got to have tea with her and her husband at their house. Nice. I think and, I saw those pictures. Yeah, it was like a really pretty setup in their sunroom. And yeah. Um, and his apparently Roger's hands are becoming famous on TikTok because he's his hands are in it like making stuff, but it never wait. shows his face. So it's like a funny little thing where people are like all all about Roger's hands. <laughs> they don't know so, who it belongs to. So what to. is her Instagram? What is she? Good question. Uh, English Cream Tea Company. If you put that in. I should say English. Here we are. Green tea. Yeah. I will follow. Okay. Awesome. Yes. But yeah, so she's just really, really sweet. She also picked me up from the train station. Uh, she also, so the B&I right. was like two hours away out of London from Claire's house. And so was English cream tea lady. <laughs> so it was a hike. But I will say as much as I started by complaining about the bus and the tube i learned i have a love for the national rail service <laughs> so <laughs> the train is so comfortable and easy and like i've never been on a crowded one and you even have like on the back of the seats there's even a tiny little tray that folds down like right. as if you're on a plane right so right. it's like real seating real air conditioning or airflow i should say I'm like just no traffic come. you can read no it's quiet it's quiet quiet you're not yes. listening to like crazy rails and tunnels right. <laughs> and going. yes so no, I'm, I'm all about national rail service now and like the last two days i actually did extra walking to avoid the bus just to go just directly to, go and do to the that. train station well you gotta yeah. get your steps in um, I know so we, we did that in Italy when, when we went, you know, we got right off the airplane and went mm -hmm. took a train immediately from Rome to Florence and um, and then back again three days later. Loved it. I mean, it's just so convenient. And there have been there's been talk for years that they're going to build a high speed rail between New York and Miami. And doggone, I wish they'd do it. They um, have it. Yeah, right. Yeah, seriously. I, I, I think the streets, especially around here, are getting so crowded and i think it's yeah i think it is an alternative i know it's going to cost in the trillions if not right more. right um, but, but uh it, it may be a solution to a problem long term so right anyway well, and speaking of that it's like the oh i've looked at i forget where i was trying to go but anyway looking at different like ways to get around in the domestically and if you're looking at like uh what amtrak's or whatever right like the train system because it's like oh that'd be fun like to have go on a train instead of a plane and more relaxing and whatever it's so much more expensive or the same price as flying and it's like takes way longer it's just like it does. why so it's it's like why are the trains so expensive why are trains so expensive I, all i can figure is because they don't get um the uh, the draw that airplanes right. do um they will if they lower the price <laughs> No, seriously. <laughs> um, so we did that a few years ago. Um, we fl we flew down to Florida to see my family, and um, Jose had to get back for work. But the boys and I, well, Jackie, the three of us, four of us, excuse me, my three kids and me, we took an Amtrak from Jacksonville, Florida, back up oh, to DC, and it was at night. I mean, that like the train didn't take off till midnight. Yeah, so yeah. It was a sleeper car. So uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the the lock on the door didn't even uh -huh. it, metal metal rattling the entire time, <laughs> the entire time. Um, so Jackie and I did the bunks. The boys did their bunks. So, but I was up on that, and you continue to stop in the middle of the night. So you hear the uh, whistle, you hear the the call, all for whatever, blah blah blah. 
Um, so yeah, there was no sleep to be had. Um, okay. but it, they are neat there. I mean, they can be relaxing. We got up and had breakfast in the, in the dining car, you know, in the morning. Um, but yeah, very expensive for what, what is it? What is the phrase? It's, it's not enough juice for the squeeze. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. So. Well, so speaking of that, that made me think of, um, oh, one of the funniest things that I picked up on right when I got there, it was my very first train ride. Uh, and it was, and they say this on all the public transit though. Um, so they talk about if you see something that doesn't look right, right. you know, like yeah. when your surroundings, yeah. so you're supposed to, you know, say something. And they even have a number to text to text the transit police, which I'm like, well, that's just smart. Because I'm like, over here, I feel like people say like, you know, see something, say something. It's like, who am I saying it to? <laughs> like, right. True. And, and, you know, and so, but what's super British about it is the, the final thing that they say is, see it, say it, sorted. <laughs> like it's sorted out now. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well, if it's that quick, like, sure. Let, like let the, yeah. And like, once you tell the police, right it's sorted they'll sort it out okay. don't. <laughs> so I heard it a million times see it say it sorted <laughs> mind so funny back. mind yeah back. it's so funny and the elevator um, door closing door <laughs> closing <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> <laughs> well I've already finished my English breakfast and I thought it was really quite good actually for yeah, it's good. It's like I'm having it's trouble now. Morning. Like I'm literally tasting all of them, trying to I figure out which one the chai is. <laughs> and you have a tongue for chai, so I'm surprised by that. I'm going on to Earl Grey mm -hmm. and okay. I think I was right. I had English breakfast first. Okay. <laughs> Are you well? I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just all hyped up, hyped up on England. Um oh I would be too, sweetheart. I don't blame you. So more show and tell. So this is Barry Brothers and Rudd. It is uh, Britain's oldest wine and spirits merchant. Okay. So the reason why we care about this <laughs> is because Claire's boyfriend, Joe, works for them. And cool. so like they have so much gin around the house. It's ridiculous. Like just different, all these kinds and like wine and everything else. But what's funny is like they don't, drink when it's just the two of them really like around the house you know like they just take it to parties so it's just like piling up so I had like bottles on bookshelves in my, in my oh guest my room oh my <laughs> it's like but do you drink gin uh I say I I do but that's usually when I get in trouble <laughs> like, oh okay gotcha. Gotcha. I like gin do but you? that's it's like every few years I get so sick off of it. And so I stay away from it for a while. And yeah. then, and then I'll like have like one gin and tonic randomly and like, oh, I can have gin again. <laughs> They're like two times later, I drink way too much. And I'm it's like that boyfriend who treats you badly, Amy, and you just can't stop. I going know, back I, know. I know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but it's been a few years and I just drank this one time and it was okay. <laughs> um, oh, it's so. Trouble. Yeah, but so it was cool. So this is located right across the street from St. James's Palace uh, because it is, has a history tied with St. James's Palace. Oh, now I'm, yeah, so now I'm going to be horrible. Uh, I can't remember all that Joe told us because he gave us like a really quick little tour. Um, I don't remember all the connections with St. James's Palace other than like they ended up supplying them, you know, with wine and spirits. Well, especially if they're right across the street. I mean, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, a, yeah. So it's like, I think, so Barry Brothers and Red. So oh, I forget her name, but there was a woman that actually started it. So she started it way back when. And um, she, let's see, do they have a, a year? Anyway, um, but they started as a coffee merchant because at whatever time it was, it wasn't actually proper to be seen drinking like wine or spirits. And so coffee houses were all around like club, coffee, club, men only, right? Like men instead only. of, yeah, right. yeah. So they weren't drinking, you know, scotch or whatever on the rocks. Like, you know, they were 
having coffee. So she decided, well, someone's got to supply them with all the coffee. So she became a coffee merchant and like did the grind, like fresh grinding of beans and whatever. And so she supplied all the coffee shops. And then as uh, the, I guess, market changed and turned and whatever, uh, she became a wine and spirit <laughs> merchant. Huh. And so what's great is they have, if I could have figured out my pictures, I guess I can still see if they showed up in my email, but um, they uh, have this giant scale that used to be used to weigh like, you know, the coffee, giant bags of coffee, basically. Okay, right. So when they switched to uh, wine and spirits, they didn't eat anymore. They still kept it around. And instead they had it, like it's big enough that like people sat on it would come in you could get yourself weighed for free like that was like a big deal and they have these uh old books that are in a safe that like he showed us that still have everyone's like who got weighed or came in or whatever like all their stuff written down in it and you could even write a reason for your weight <laughs> like so oh, no yeah <laughs> whether it was gain or loss like, you could be like you know I was you know I had been sick or whatever or I was on a trip <laughs> like, really so, yeah any famous people like like yeah I really so the one yeah the one name I want to say is Lord Byron I want to say that one um okay. Yeah, was he his author? I'm horrible. I should know who he is. Do you know who Lord Byron is? Lord Byron, uh, yeah, writer. Yeah. Writer, thanks. Okay. Isn't he a poet, I believe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. He's an author of poetry. <laughs> you can say that over here. If you say that over in England, they're going <gasps> to. I know, I know. That's why I was like, who is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, George Gordon Byron. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, there were, yeah. yes, so there were some uh, famous people in there and let's see, they had a picture on, or a framed piece of paper on the wall that shows that uh, when they were sh gonna be shipping over a bunch of uh, gin to the US, um, which was like a normal thing to do, but I guess they were told like, hold on, just wait, like wait a couple of weeks because there's a better ship that's going to be leaving and heading that way and it was the titanic and so they have an official letter with like from the titanic basically listing what they lost wow <laughs> yeah what cargo they lost oh my goodness isn't that wild <laughs> that's so crazy but yeah that's that's there i mean that's part of their right. history and part of ours too and everything i think that's pretty cool though yeah i mean yeah yeah so they and i mean yeah, it's like when they talk about it right it's like everyone has a good sense of humor where they're just like oh well we were gonna send out the shipment and someone was like no no just wait a couple weeks there's a better boat that's leaving <laughs> so they waited on the Titanic. oh my gosh the irony that i wrote. right right yeah um i know hold on you froze for a second can you still hear me Well, I don't know if I'm frozen or you're frozen. Oh, wait. Now you're, you're back. back. I'm back. So, you're back. Yeah, yeah. So were, was I frozen to you? Uh, it says the internet connection is unstable. I'm not sure why. Okay, because I said you were frozen to me, but I was like, but I don't know if I'm frozen <laughs> to you. Anyway, we're back, guys. We're back. We're back. Um, I've already finished my English breakfast and my- I know. Um, my Earl Grey. Your Earl Grey, yeah. That is good. Um, and then let's see if there's any other funny stories out of this one. Um, but it was, yeah, it's really cool. So they do like really fancy events in the cellar. So the cellar is two acres. So they have two acres of cellar. Yeah. Like the shop upstairs isn't that, I mean, I guess it's kind of like a block of a building, but it's split up into different things. But anyway, but like, yeah, they have like two football fields under the cellar. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Yeah. And so they have part of it where they set it up 
for fancy gatherings. So it's like a super long dining cool. table, right? Um, they have one here where it shows like all the people sitting at the table. Wow. So that's cool. Really neat. It looks rather narrow. It is. Yeah, I'd say, well, oh, here's a better shot maybe where you can see one of the rooms where it's a little more open. Cause there's okay. like- Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, probably yeah. gin tastings or pairings or something like that, I would imagine. Yeah, well, I think it's like, it's like to rent out for like special events. So like, I mean, if you want, I don't know, wedding reception or whatever, right. whatever yeah. things. Yeah. So, Great. so that was cool. Uh, and then last bit of show and tell. So I don't know if you remember that we were going to go to an art gallery and see some American artist, right? So, or maybe we talked about this at tea time. Maybe you don't know. I don't know. Was it Tate? Right? No. So, um, it's the Royal Academy of Arts. Okay. Uh, but so I knew what we were going to go see. I knew it was American Southern uh, artists. And so I was saying how it's made funny to go see like American artwork over there. Over there, like, yes. Yeah, right. So it is the exhibit that's called Souls Grown Deep Like the Rivers. And it is, so it's Black artists from the American South. And <laughs> Sorry. bless you. Thank you. And so it was cool, but also, so like all of us thought it would be bigger than it was. It was like kind of two large gallery rooms full. Okay. Of like it didn't take us that long to get through. What I did like is in this little pamphlet thing, they basically, almost every work of art it describes like basically what you're looking at. Because I told him, I was like, I feel really out of my element in an art <laughs> gallery. <laughs> like, tell me what I'm looking at. So, because most of it was pretty, abstract but it was all different kinds of stuff so like a lot of it um is like kind of reclaimed materials or whatever so there's like fabric and scrap metal and whatever all these different things right uh, they, they even had a section that was just quilting just quilts mm -hmm. so that was cool um but yeah so it was it was interesting I also thought it would be for some reason like older works of art so like there's one from like 2022 that is in there. And I'm like, what? That's, I mean, no, but, they're part, they're but they're part, them. yeah, but they're like part of the group. So it's like, it's a foundation uh, that was like formed by one, an art collector, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in Georgia. But uh, the oldest thing I think was maybe a quilt and that was like 1930s, but most of them are like 80s and 90s. So okay. I just thought that'd be older stuff. Yeah, but, but it was, yeah, but it was neat. And some of them had a uh, pretty, I don't know. I was like, I'm horrible at talking about art. I don't know, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Basically, some of them, they made, they made like a very big impact on some of them and had like, I'm trying to think of the word like poignant, like ideas or whatever, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, message, whatever it was. <laughs> And you were so, like, where's the tea? Just give me the tea show. Where's yeah, the tea yeah, show? I know. I was like, yeah. looking at the art, I read the thing. And like, cause like one thing was really cool after I read what I was looking at because it looked kind of wild. And like, then it tells me, oh, that's supposed to be uh, like a downtrodden, like American Eagle. I was like, oh, now I see that it's a bird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was like, uh, oh, like those magic eyes or whatever. Yes, like, yeah, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Now I see. Yes. Now yeah, I you got can't it. see anything, okay. and now I see what it is. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so that was fun. But we met up with a couple of Claire's friends uh, that uh, I met on the trip before uh, the New Year's trip last time, and Claire had forgotten to tell them that I was coming. So like, we walk up, and they're just like, "Oh, you're here." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't do yeah sure. yeah and then yeah then Claire's like oh no I guess I only told one person in the group <laughs> tell anybody else god well let me ask you this mm -hmm. so did you have anything what was the yummiest this is what Jose and I was talking about this. what's what's yeah. the best thing that you ate while you were there so the best thing I ate while I was there I would say so Joe cooked 
the best meals that I had. He cooked his traditional English breakfast, which was delicious, especially his hash browns that he makes. So he like shaves the potato, like makes them completely from scratch. And right. I don't know what he mixes in them because they're like flattened into little patties, but they're not cooked so brown like I feel like Americans do. Mm -hmm. Or at least is right. So I thought it was better, but um, but he had to have had like sour cream or something mixed in them. It tasted, they tasted really good. Uh, yeah, he had sour cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. And then uh, he fixed the traditional Sunday roast as well and did uh, roast beef with it. And the like, the so I'll say the carrots. I don't know what kind of carrots these were, if these are English carrots or if we have carrots like these here, but. They were really, really good. <laughs> like, and he just bakes it all. Like, it's all just in the oven. It's all roasted. One, yeah, all roasted together. Yeah, and the and Look the, the cabbage good. or sprouts. I'm curious. Yeah, we had yeah. So we had uh, asparagus instead of cabbage. They had some kind of green stuff <laughs> that's like basically a little bit hardier than cabbage. I forget okay. what he said it is. Um, and then. Wait, is that rutabaga? I remember the word rutabaga. What's okay. rutabaga? Is that a leafy thing? Uh, I thought a rutabaga is a root though, but I, I could be completely wrong. But well, I could be, I was like, I could be misremembering when he said that name. <laughs> like that could have been something else we ate. Um, yeah, I know it's like images. Uh, yeah, so maybe that was something else that we did. Oh, you know what? Never mind. That was a story he was talking about when he had to fix something with rutabaga. <laughs> okay. Changing Catch that. Catch that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. When, yeah. when you say traditional English breakfast, though, what comes mm -hmm. to mind for me is um, so there are tomato slices and there's um, uh, as we call it blood sauce Wait. in South America, but it's um. They call it black, black pudding. pudding. Yes, yeah, black yeah, pudding. Yeah. Did you have that? Yeah. So and baked beans, right? So they had yeah. like the high their Heinz baked beans. Mm -hmm. Um, so they had that and they had toast. I was too full to even eat the toast, but so it was that they have sausage links, they have English bacon, uh, they had tomatoes that are like steamed in the oven or roasted, or whatever, in the oven. Okay, okay. Um I've had it before where they include mushrooms too. He didn't do mushrooms, which is fun. I mean, I like mushrooms, but whatever. <laughs> so I don't know how classic that is. And so- no, that sounds pretty good. I mean, wow. Yeah. And then, yeah. but yes, but so he did fix the uh, black pudding because, and he said, cause he likes it. He was like, I was excited to have a reason to buy it. <laughs> and so I told him, I was like, well, I, he's like, have you tried it before I go? I wasn't brave enough to try it last time. And I was like, I'll give it a whirl this time. So I like took like the world's like tiniest bite and was like, yeah. And it's was like, mm -mm. like that's very, tastes a lot like blood, doesn't it? Like it's pretty coppery. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got some gaminess to it for sure. Yeah. And it's like, so he told me, cause I didn't realize it was like mixed in with oats and seasoning and whatever. So it's like, you know, but yeah. what's, as I just asked him, I was like, whose blood is it? <laughs> I'm gonna put my tea down for a minute. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, and he said pork. I think <laughs> it's like okay. I was just curious. <laughs> you think he was thinking pork might be the only blood they can eat it with? I have no idea. Like versus, I would think, I would think cow. I would think cow, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess we could Google it and see. But he, yeah. um, but so yeah, not a fan of that. I guess if it's something you grow up on, then that's something, but like right. that's a taste you have. Yes. But... Exactly. Like pickled herring or, you know, kippers, right. which I think is pickled herring, kippers right. for breakfast and stuff. Or what's the other one that they eat is um, kedgeree, which is like rice with oh. cod. And oh, um, I didn't, haven't had that. Yeah. That and I'm, sound... I, I don't know. The, the thought of having fish for breakfast is. Yes, that sounds. Not you know, so when you're great. raised on sugary cereal, and which I have yeah. gotten away from, I have to say, in my adult years, but when you're raised on sugary cereal, the thought of having cod or anything fish yeah, in yeah. the morning. Right, right. Well, even, even not to go camping, too. It's like, no. oh, you know, eat what we catch. And yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we going to catch some chickens <laughs> and get their eggs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can do 
I can try to do eggs, unfortunately. Eggs, the older I get, the, the less eggs like me, even though oh, I love yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. And it's so, made from por pork or beef blood. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So, just not chicken blood. It's basically, uh, who, that's who we ruled out. <laughs> really taking quite a turn. So, did you try... Did you try any different kind of tea while you were over there? Anything new or did you just go for, just give me tea? I just went for whatever tea they had. I just, I basically drank like the Brits do. So Claire, it was pretty crazy. She didn't just have straight like English breakfast. She had Earl Grey <laughs> as an option. So we had two options. You had two options, absolutely. Yeah, um, and I'm trying to think what brand they were. It wasn't one of the regular you know, stereotypical one, like it wasn't PG tips or Tetley or wasn't any, it was like just some random one she found at the store that she liked. Tea. So yeah, it's tea. Uh, Tetley, something. <laughs> right. But yeah. so, so I did not try anything, any crazy teas. Oh wait, well actually, so at the English cream tea lady's place. So in her back room, there's this like wood thing with a bunch of shell or drawers and it's all different teas in the drawers. And she lets you, mix your own tea so you she gives you a tea bag and like you look and see what you want to mix and you get a little scoop and you scoop and she's like and if it tastes bad she's like then we'll throw it out and we'll get to try another one. <laughs> oh my gosh that's really kind of cool yeah that one was really cool so that so what did i put together i put together uh rose petals there was one that was called Oh, it was a very British sounding thing. And it was, I feel like dessert, like, I can't remember, but it was a black tea, basically. It was, oh, it was basically a black tea with like some vanilla in it. And then rose petals and orange peel. That's what I did. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah, I was like, let me just take things that I like from all my teas. <laughs> put them together. It's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Well, that sounds really neat though. And I, I yeah. saw your pictures. I think I caught all the pictures that you posted. Right. So okay. It looks, good. It looks so nice. It looks so much fun. Oh, thank you. So yeah. It was awesome. So I know I've taken like a million years for all of this. So hold up. So let's coronation talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So We're did you, did you I, wake I up? Thinking. What's that? All right, where were you? Weren't you? I, well, I woke up when, it, I mean, it was going on, um, but I was packing to go to Florida uh, to right. get a Mother's Day tea mm -hmm. to my mom and her friends. It was a week before Mother's Day, actually. Right. So I went down to Florida to do that. Um, we were joking, though, because, um, so the tea was actually the day after the coronation, but I had bought my brand new pink hat. And I was joking with my parents. I'm like, I should wear my hat home on mm -hmm. this flight. And she'd be like, oh, you know, <laughs> I feel like I was hungover going, man, that cor coronation was. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. I, packed, I bought the, the, the hat. If you go back in my pictures, if you see it, it's lovely. I'll it's have to look. Really pretty. It looks organza, but it came in an envelope this thick. And I was like, and then it just popped in my hat. It just pops. And so you can squash That's it. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, it is so, I should run up. What a it. nice hat to have. It is. It was so pretty. I don't have a light pink one. So, um, and the brim is short enough where it doesn't like, if you and I were to do tea time, it wouldn't cover sure. my face. And it's very thin. It's like I said, an organza material that it would let the light through. So that's was awesome. Pretty. Yeah, so that's what, um, but yeah, I got to watch it. I got to watch a um, when I was packing, getting ready at the last minute um, is when they were actually, you know, when Charles goes behind the, uh, the screen and um, oh, right. and then um, but after let's see I got there on Saturday so that evening after mom and I had made quite a bit and gotten all the prep done for the party the next day we sat down right. and we watched a lot of it so um, nice. yeah so I, I thought it was it was great um, very traditional very English I mean I know that they scaled back I know right. that there were things that they didn't do but um I guess because of we live in this age and and it's hard not to question, but did you ever at one point look at this and go, wow, this is a lot of hoopla elaboration and money for uh, what? And um, mm -hmm. 
So it's hard not to question that. Um, and yeah. yet there, there's a side of me that's like, this is so great. This is the that's thing you know, but that's what we want from them. That's what right. we want from them. I know, I know. Well, that's funny that you say that because I thought it was all wonderful and beautiful. So the funny thing is like, what I question is like the essential, uh, I don't know, point behind the monarchy is that like the whole chosen by God, anointed by God thing. So I'm like, well, I mean, they were born into it. So it's like, so just the same way as God chose me to live in Florida, <laughs> like, <laughs> and like have the life I have. <laughs> it's, we'll just... Okay. But if we're going to talk about <laughs> being born into it, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Charles II had many illegitimate children. Right. Wait, you mean and Charles I? Charles II. Oh, right. Wait. Who do we have now? Charles III? <laughs> I, yes. I already <laughs> forgot. I already forgot what number because I'm always a gentleman. Experiencing jet lag, please. <laughs> I am. I was up at four o'clock this morning. Uh, you are up early. Yeah, preparing for the B the, the B and I meeting, and they're like, "Are you still on Great Britain time?" I was like, "No, I'm on the time of like this is the only time I have to prepare for the meeting." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wake oh. up to a text from Amy saying, I've already sent you the text. And I was like, I know. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> I don't, well, because I was so proud of myself. I was like, I'm not doing it like last second, literally last second. <laughs> literally, yes. I'm still doing it day of. <laughs> yes, that was so funny. So no, I, I loved it. Um, You know, Kate, got to go to Kate. Sorry, she looked impeccable. Sure. She was gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I thought Camilla's dress was nice but yeah. I thought it could have been more for the woman who's going to get up there and get crowned. I thought it could have been more. Um, so little design, something, I don't know, put your boots I, it's a, it's a, It's a fitting issue is what I felt because yes. when she sat down in it, it's like the bodice was so structured that when she sat down and if she wasn't sitting a certain way, it like sink, her body like sunk in, right? And there's like yeah. gapping. So I liked... I liked the dress overall and when she's walking in it, but yeah, sitting down, it was kind of like, yeah, they didn't fit it. No, they didn't fit it right. I, um, I agree. I agree. But also, I thought it was strange that they didn't bring her over for her crown. Like they did it over on the side where she was, her crowning. Again, I think that has to do with consort. I think oh yeah, I'm sure it's the official you know. thing. Yeah. We just haven't seen it. And so, yeah. uh, and then, but I liked that, Charles like had a little smile on his face when she was getting crowned. Yeah. It's like he was so serious about himself, but he there were cute little moments like when William had his time with Charles, yeah, saying his yeah. stuff, and that looked really sweet uh, for both of them. And then I don't know. People of course tried to make a big deal about how far away Harry was. It was like he was like right there with the cousins. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't like. So thrown in the back out of you <laughs> yeah well and hiding behind the red feather of his you know aunt Anne. Um, oh yeah and and people like do you think that was intentional no i don't think it was intentional i think that no. was just what it was it's a lady um, with a big red yes. feather <laughs> so i watched the whole thing from the because when i came back to i went through it and watched it and i watched it um it was uh, that WETA is basically like PBS UK from here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was only British commentators. It was one British commentator and then she brought a guest. Um, there was not one mention of Harry other than when the Duke of Sussex is now entering with his cousins. You see him with there's so yeah, yeah. there's Beatrice, there's, you know, Eugenie Bowen. Sure. Is it. I love that it. It. That's and awesome. I mentioned it, yeah, when I mentioned it to my friend, Emma, my British friend, Emma, um, she says, well, you know, we think if we ignore it, it will go away. Yeah. And, um, and I thought, you know, well, that I, I do believe that was the approach. And it was, it was the approach of this is the King's Day. This is not, yeah. day. It's not about any of that. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was really interesting because I, I think, I, I don't know what the, the American commentary was like when when harry entered the building or anything 
I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Would Harry have had a moment with his dad as the Duke of Sussex? Would he have gone up and pledged allegiance to his father the way yeah. William did? Or right, right. Or is that, right. Or is that just an heir? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't also, know. yeah. So uh, Paula had the party at her house, which started right. at 5, 5.30 a.m. And I was running late, so I showed up at 6 a.m. So, <laughs> and that's so, pretty good for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like a half hour away. So it's like, ah, I was so close. So, yeah. um, but so, uh, but she had it playing. So it's like live, right? So they were already in, they had like just gotten into the church or whatever. Right, like in this right. little parade. So that's fine. But the, um, but since we we're watching it live and I don't know which channel we we're watching it through, but it's like zero comment right so nobody's talking at all it's just listening to whatever's happening at the service and sometimes they'd put up the names of whoever was like speaking or singing right and that was right. like it so I loved watching it that way I was like this is perfect this is exactly like yes don't talk about any of it just let yes. me like take it in exactly so, so that was pretty cool um but I also thought it was funny that everyone was talking about how Kate wasn't going to wear a tiara. She's going to wear some kind of floral, whatever. And I'm like, that counts as floral? I was like, that's a silver headband. It, it's <laughs> like, a silver headband. I Yeah. I, was I, like, thought was, I thought it was gorgeous. Yeah. I, I thought it was, but I, yeah, the whole bucking tradition is like, I, I don't think it was that far from bucking tradition. Okay. So maybe it wasn't. Yeah an actual tiara but it's like it, it may as well have been <laughs> it may as well have been um I thought Charlotte looked cute I didn't like that she mm -hmm. also had a laurel headband because you didn't I like, thought it was cute that there was like mommy and a little me. bit too mommy and me moment about During, it I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. I mean I get you know I didn't hate it I didn't hate sure, it sure. part of me was like is they're just like, is this an occasion where we do this? I know. It just seemed a little too cutesy for me. That's um, true. Well, it's not but, like that's a thing they do, right? It's not like they're ever matching anywhere else. No. That's no. not what they're known for. No. <laughs> so. I, I'm not sure what that was about. Now, you know, the, the person I thought stole the show, and she was quite uh, talked about, was the, and I can't remember what her name is or what her actual official the name is. The lady in blue with the sword? Yeah. <laughs> I that loved her. dress was, and her she was immaculate absolutely yes. stunning Head to and talk it yeah and talk about like the fit of a garment i mean it was perfectly yeah. tailored perfectly, perfectly tailored. tailored and um, she and the, and yeah, the and dress she, was the color was regal enough the laurel could yeah. have been, i mean you could have taken that to be a little um too literal for them but i loved it i thought it no, was I thought it, enough ornament I thought everything I was like perfect. Yeah. And really she just did a really great job. It's like, I mean, you have to like hold that thing straight and stand still. <laughs> yeah, and she remained sober throughout. She, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, she was, that was good. So that good. was, yeah, 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 that was good. Um, and then let's see. Uh, well, of course, like it was cool. It, it was nice, right? We haven't, we, as if I was, as if we were around, haven't had a coronation <laughs> since 1952. <laughs> Yeah, right but but to see uh you know the diversity reflected yeah. not at, like you know like race gender and age right like and, all, and religion and faith, they, they, and faith. They yeah different faiths th throughout I thought it was great right. so I thought that was really cool and so uh but on that note so I asked oh, one of, yeah go ahead I asked one of Claire's friends uh I won't out her just in case okay yeah but I asked her after we had been to a martini bar and she had plenty <laughs> martini <laughs> I I was like so did you watch the coronation like because we we're walking that's when we were walking to five guys <laughs> five guys that's <laughs> like right into the five night guys. yes yeah that was their pick <laughs> so <laughs> and it was a madhouse in there by the way everyone was there and it's two oh stories gosh. it was just like everyone's been out drinking and this is where you go so anyway so I asked her, I was like, did you watch the coronation? And she was like, Amy, she's like, how do I say this? Was like, it, like, cause she knows obviously I'm a royalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like trying to be careful. And then she's like, look, I've always been a royalist until all the stuff with Megan. And she was like, she's like, Megan has her flaws for sure. And she was like, but 
she basically just feels like the the diversity within the coronation had sort of an emptiness to it because it's like yeah like sure you do it for show but like in your real life did you let megan in you didn't let megan in right like that's kind of how she saw like that that's how she saw it as like okay, a yeah. black british woman right okay and it was kind of like and i was like yeah that's fair i go i mean there's definitely so many layers to all of it but but i was like but i can see how on the surface or or at first glance or whatever that you just like i see how that doesn't align right <laughs> like if if that's the reason i i, I don't want to interrupt you because you're because you're still talking but no, no, you're fine. Okay. I, I've i never interpreted necessarily that the reason Megan is no longer living in England with the royal family, I never really interpreted that was that it was because of her color. Right. I thought, it, I thought it, was, it was so much less that she was, I don't think it was because she wasn't white enough. I think it's because she wasn't British enough. And yeah. not because they didn't, be, but because she didn't know how to play the game. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not saying that that's wrong. I mean, she went in as herself. Um, right. I mean, I have a, a totally different perspective after reading the book and watching the documentary, you know, right. the way I used to feel and stuff. Um, I, you know, she still irks me. Um, yeah. but, um, but I don't, but I also think that they are a victim of some really just nasty, untruthful yeah. stuff. I really do believe there's a lot of that. Um, yeah. But I don't think the reason that she was not in on this was not because she was black I think it was because she didn't play the game because well, she wanted more attention as a Hollywood actress I right. think some of this is just, she just didn't know yeah she just wasn't she built. wasn't ready to keep her mouth shut <laughs> yeah she wasn't prepared for yeah. yeah for that life and I think so yes and the the media right they're the ones that really brought race out to the forefront Yes. And like uh, Claire's friend admits, just like Megan did in her docu series, where she's like, <laughs> her friend is just like, I mean, she didn't even know she was Black until she got over here and the media told her she was, right? So, like, it wasn't like that was always a big identity or anything for her, but the media, British media, made it a whole thing. And then on top of that, with oh, I forget, oh, the Oprah thing talking about the. Yeah color what the baby will look like and then that made William make some random comment of like my self and my family aren't racist and like weird stuff like that happening where it's like yeah it's just like sprinkled throughout doesn't look good <laughs> optics it doesn't right? look good but the media you know threw gasoline on the flame you know oh yeah it, it, it was it was this big of a flame I think before and it just I think it was more that, you know, Harry wanted more protection. And again, right. I go back to, and, and I still hear the wham, 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 you know, from the media and why should he right. have it? Why should, and apparently the, the recent lawsuit they lost, so he's not allowed to get the security. Uh, but again, I think he feels this in his mind. I mean, just look at me yeah. I to, to speak for Harry. Um, but we I have think, every, we have every right. To have every right. <laughs> yes. Um, but I just, I think he worries, we've had this discussion before, I think he worries for the security of his family after the trauma that he went through, dealing with what his mother went through, the way right. that she died. Um, I think he is concerned about, and and the credible threats that right. he knows, that he and Megan right. know have been against her about killing her, the nastiness right. of his children, things like that. I think he, he's just, I, I need the security because I'm, how can I just go, well, everything's going to be okay. Put them out there. And if something happens, I'll never forgive myself. You know, I sure, can, sure. so I, I, yeah, there were all those comments after the coronation about, um, it was so white. Well, they're white. Yeah. What? what the, like the, the, atten the attendees, that's, that was the thing. Was it the attendees? They were just, you or know, they're, or they're just saying that the Royal family is just so white. It's what just, was, it's all just the whole thing. They're just so white. Well, uh, but yeah, that's because they, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's if this were an African tribal something or other, right. can I go back and go, uh, it was so black. I mean, right. that's, who they are. that's what their people are. That's I mean, who they are. Yeah. It's like, you can, you can argue it going forward if you want like <laughs> if there's anybody else that's like turned away <laughs> but, but at the same going, time do they have to intentionally marry 
people of other races just to satisfy the public? I mean, no, you want them no. to be happy in their marriages if this is who they're attracted right, to. Right, right. So, right. you know, also, I just thought that was such a... Also, I'll, I'll say the... So the same friend, right? And, and again, all of this take with a grain of salt because I'm inter interviewing her after she's had two martinis, which by the way, this place only allows you to have two because there's like five shots of gin or vodka, whichever you oh choose God. per wow. martini. Wow. <laughs> so it's a really fancy place that Joe took us to. Anyway, yeah. um, it's so... Uh, so anyway, so this is all her <laughs> off the record saying these things but she also so what makes me question some of her opinions is because of other things she believes that i'm like that's very tabloid heavy like she's influenced by british media is my because she is dead set that william has a mistress and that kate <laughs> No, she's she there, I'm not. Maybe she knows more than I do. I know, so. Yeah, she acts like, yes, they do. It's I was like, I don't, I don't believe it. <laughs> I yeah, I, I don't believe it either, but she's entitled to her opinion. If she, you know, she's you know, seen or read something that she, you know. Sure. Yeah, you know. yeah. If she got a text from Kate about it. <laughs> Your friend, not mine. I didn't say that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> But so, yeah, so anyway, we didn't get as deep into that because we had already, well, we were almost to five guys. <laughs> That's why. But, but also, I like just shut it down. <laughs> like, yeah, changing the subject. I know, it's like, I'm Ooh, open subject. to like all the, you know, different levels of things with the royal family. But then it's like, apparently, I have a hard stop when it comes to William having an affair. <laughs> I know, I mean, too. <laughs> um, yeah, I, my thing is mostly just, I'm not saying that Kate is a perfect being. I mean, she looks like, you know, there are times she's probably pretty difficult to live with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, but at the same time, I, it's just, it's what he witnessed his mom go through is where I have a hard time believing that he would do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, so. I know. It's like, but then there are the whole, like, you know, people repeat their parents' mistakes or whatever. So, yeah, like, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah. With the Megan thing or the security thing, I was going to say that the added weird thing that they have that Diana didn't have, I'd say, are the death threats. Like, I'm sure she was a celebrity, so she probably got some kind of random right. death threats, right. right? I'd say, I would say more likely it would be like obsessive stalkers that, like, you know, love her too much. Right. <laughs> like, that's probably what they'd worry about. So for Megan, it's just like vicious, like serious death threats. Like, they just want her gone. So it's like, that's a much different security threat <laughs> than trying to get them to stop taking pictures yes. right, of yes. like, of loving yes. you. <laughs> well, so I'm not even going to approach the whole uh, high speed chase in New York, you know, that mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that was about. I really don't yeah, know. Yeah. But this is really interesting because this is top stories and it's 16 hours ago. Have you seen this okay. a month ago, two days ago, no. two days ago? No, what is it? These are headlines, okay? So Prince Harry reportedly called divorce lawyers months ago. Prince and Harry, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have reportedly hired divorce lawyers. Fans are convinced these rumors about Harry and Meghan have everything to do with blah, blah, blah. Prince Harry, Meghan heading for divorce? Royal author says, Prince Harry has reportedly contacted divorce lawyers. I mean, this, I just- There's, That's crazy. There's no- crazy. I'm just gonna say, there's no way or there's a reason like there's some other reason that like or it's like they're you know an attorney of like they're not just divorce attorneys like at the firm or whatever like maybe it's just like oh you know, they have to you know yeah it, it just that is the most bogus thing I mean seriously I I, I really would be stunned I would be absolutely stunned because I'd be like after all this like now what that's crazy. Like, yes. So none of these headlines are coming from viable sources. You sure. Know? This That's is, what I figured. Yeah. I figured no, like no. one, it's probably came from like one random person making it up and then everyone else jumped on it. It was like, all these oh, other... that's good. Yeah, yeah. Let's work with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. There is nothing in here that says anything. No. Uh uh. Yeah. No. 
Let's see. I don't recognize any of these news sources. So yeah, garbage. <laughs> um, I was going to check just in case. I heard a couple beeps over on Facebook, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't have any text from Mumsy. She, I don't think oh, she okay. knows. I don't think we're live. I mean, I don't think she knows we're live. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Nope. It's all right. It was other stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, it was very exciting to see a coronation. Uh, it was. And, and, and we'll get to see more, which is so I know. Crazy. I was yeah. like, I do, I do wish him, you know, whatever, a long, happy, healthy reign. <laughs> I mean, given his age and like, whatever, we'll get William when we get William. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Well, so when I flew to Florida, it was a Saturday. So Saturday evening, I went to mass with my parents and the priest that they have is, um, he's, uh, he, believe it, he's, he's uh, Ukrainian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but having nothing to do with the war or anything like that, although he is, um, he serves as a military priest too. So they are, they, they think he's going to have to go back um, to serve. Oh. But anyway, at the end of the mass, because remember this, it was coronation day. Mm -hmm. At the end of the mass, he said, so watching all this stuff on television, he said, uh, and it's funny because his voice, I'm sorry, but it, it, his voice would remind me of um, the Muppets, the, the chef, the hunk to hunk to me. <laughs> but he was, he said at the end, <laughs> in his accent, um, he said something like he said, I'm watching all of this and I just want to say, I thank God that we don't have to say long live the king and all that other kind of stuff and i was just like what 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 that was his take on it that was his take on it um so it came up at the tea party with my mom's friends the next day yeah. and um and they were like well, why would he say that and i said all i can figure is he's saying thank goodness we're in a land of you know we're you know the whole American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't report to a monarch. We don't have the monarchy anymore. Right, we right. Have our... And we're a very different government system anyway. Exactly. Like, you know, and, yeah. and I get it. I get that. But you know, it was just kind of like the most of the ladies like oh, he said what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like that didn't need to be said. I, I think I had a teacup in my hand, and I'm like, hey, long live the king. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I just oh my gosh. So that's crazy. Anyway. Well. I I do have some things to ship to you. They're on my table. <laughs> just, just like where everything. Don't tell me. I won't tell you. Um, but I was get, I was playing with my necklace. So this I got. I always like to get cheap jewelry that's like at the little palace shops. Um, it's too far away. You can't see, but it's a cameo. little cameo of Queen Victoria. Oh, Victoria! Okay. And, they a, and they had a matching ring. Nice. And uh, I got. Uh, match. I got a set for Piper too, so we could have like matching ones. Oh, how and cute! It's so funny. She like wore hers like the first day she wore the necklace to school, not the ring. And we like went to we went somewhere before school, and she's like showing everyone. She's just like going like this to everyone, and then she'd be like, "This is Queen Victoria," and they're like, "Oh, nice!" She's like, "Queen of England." I was like. <laughs> But I'm like, what other five-year-old is like, check out my Queen Victoria? <laughs> I got her, I got her the perfect stuffy that I found at the Westminster Abbey gift, gift shop, which I randomly, I realized when I went in there, I was like, oh yeah, I love this one every time. Of like the palace or royal gift shops, for whatever reason, I love the selection at Westminster Abbey. <laughs> so there's a tip. Oh, that's why I got my, yeah, I love their stuff. Yeah. 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 It's like, they have such great stuff. And so, um, but I found they had a Corgi that um, has a little crown on and has like a purple robe, like Royal robe. Oh, cute. And it says like, I heart London on the back of it. But cute. so she, yeah. So she loved it. That's great. And I got her little brother, a stuffed double decker bus um and I didn't even know it made noise what's beautiful his mom was so pleased is that it's the quietest honk ever right <laughs> like, right <laughs> thank you for not getting something obnoxious <laughs> I was like I didn't even know it made noise <laughs> That's but, funny. yeah but so he like loves it and apparently it's just like his his favorite new thing he brought it to show and tell and um 
I don't know if you know, I probably mentioned it before, but like, so my name to him is my mommy because Piper refers to me as my mommy over there. And so, so he has his mommy, but then he has my mommy, which is one word. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I, like uh, his mom, like they all basically reinforce it. And like, look, it's my mommy's on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, my mom? My mom? It's so cute. <laughs> so he's really, yeah, so he's really good. And then Piper graduated uh last friday so it's like i came back to a whirlwind of events <laughs> but, i'll bet you did yeah but it was it was good and it was very cute watching all those little five-year-olds try to recite and do their dance because they had like six different songs prepared with like moves and everything but they said the pledge of, i shouldn't say they piper said her pledge of allegiance perfectly <laughs> They like really made sure that they know the individual words and they weren't just like learning things to not, not, yeah, watermelon. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so that was really funny. And Piper one of her favorite things at the moment. So she'll just start pledging allegiance like throughout the day. <laughs> That's good. She's got it yeah. down at an early age. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we have to go in a bit, but i on that note, I have to ask you. So in school right? You had to say Pledge of Allegiance in the morning, right? Yep. Did you, so we had to sing My Country Tis of Thee beforehand. Did you guys sing anything? Um, growing up, um, so I was in Valdosta, Georgia, small, tiny southern town in mm-hmm. a very tiny Catholic school, and um, there was the courtyard, I'm trying to picture where it was, I don't know they moved it, but it Everybody came out of the classroom and stood. I mean, we're, there's one class for each grade, so kindergarten uh-huh. through eight, but each class was probably only 15, 16 kids top. Oh, okay. So, but we would all stand around the flag and we would do the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we would either sing the national anthem or some patriotic song. I remember that okay. sometimes. And uh, then we'd say prayers and okay. then you'd go back to your, to your classroom. So yeah, I mean that's what every morning. Right. I I was I was curious because since ours was my country tis of thee, which I learned many years later is the exact same song as God Save the King. Right, right. <laughs> Punch Queen. <laughs> I'm like, that's just perfect. <laughs> I'm like, I learned the wrong lyrics, but that's perfect that that's yeah, what I know, I right? had for me. <laughs> well, they that's they funny. borrowed songs all the time, like um the uh the Star Spangled Banner. That was a oh, really? tune. That tune was not original. The words were original, but the tune was not original. I didn't know that. Yeah. And there's a couple of songs, you know, there are a few songs like um what's the Beethoven song? Um Ode to Joy. Da da da. Yeah, da, yeah. da, da, da. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so there are a couple of different church songs that we sing to that tune. Oh. Um, and right. so yeah, so things are they, there are there they, they would take the same tune and tweak it to the, you right. know. The people were lyricists they were not musicians I guess exactly yeah it was like apparently yeah apparently it was easier to find a lyricist than like an actual musician and I suppose over here in the you know in the new world it's like like well all the music was back in England so I guess we'll take whatever they're doing yes exactly which I you know in a way I guess could kind of be like I look what we're gonna do with your that's what I was saying I was gonna say it's probably like at the time seemed like an F you and <laughs> probably but, right. but to, but to me I'm like you guys you didn't separate yourself very well <laughs> I know right right um so I did want it's funny because I was going to ask you a question too so as Camilla is being crowned yeah. yes and William and Harry in the crowd what yeah. do you think that felt like what oh, do you for them their minds? Well, I think, uh, I mean, based on, right, what we heard in, like, Harry's book, or I should say, you read, I heard, (laughs) in Harry's book, um, was, excuse me, like, he never wanted them to marry anyway, right? Like, Harry didn't. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say William was the same? I feel like they were, Harry tried to say that it was, like, fine, dad, you can be with her, but, like, just please don't marry her. And then they got married. I, so. I, don't know, I don't know why I'm thinking that it was he finally, you know, that they was saying, 
go ahead and marry her. I just want, I just wanted my dad to be happy. I just want them to be happy. I feel like they, it was, I feel like it was like, they want you to be happy and she's great, like great, fine. But it, there was something about either not marrying her so she wouldn't be queen or whatever it was, but yeah. it, there was something that they, like a caveat to it. Um, yeah. But I wonder if like so many years have passed now that maybe they're just like, I don't know, and they've got their own drama. <laughs> yeah. like, there yeah. might have been like, there might have been like a fleeting moment of like, oh, that was gonna be mom or whatever. But I'm sure they had like a million other things on their mind, or at the least William. I, I just think they're probably both of them at some point. May, maybe Harry more than William. I don't know, but right. A, a lamenting that that should have been mom or what if you know yeah especially yeah harry's i don't know overall theme of his book it sounds very much like yeah he's very resentful and definitely feels like his mother should be alive yes yeah he doesn't accept so. yeah um, yeah yeah um oh shoot there was a point that went through my head too um about Camilla. Oh, oh, so let's say Diana didn't die. They still yeah. divorced. He did remarry. Right. Um, but Diana's still around. Would she have attended the coronation? Probably. Mm -hmm. not. Probably not. But because they didn't have Fergie, right? They didn't let her attend because she's not family or whatever. True, <laughs> true. Um, but but Diana's the mother to the heir to the throne. True, so true. I wonder. Um, I I don't think she would have attended, but wow, to be in a position now where you have to not only bow to your ex husband but to Camilla. Yeah, yeah, right. For any <laughs> that's event. Not, right, right. See, I hadn't thought of it that way. I was thinking like, man, what a like ruckus that would cause. I don't media wise, where it's like Camilla's wearing the crown that Diana should be wearing. Like you know, like I yeah, feel like yeah. It's, almost easier that she's not here not alive yeah that thing to say. That's yeah i know but yeah, like, but there is that thought that goes through your head it's like well she's been spared that but yeah yeah but yeah and I, and I think you know if we if we look at this as the charles and camilla love story right mm -hmm. and we you know whatever i you know feel for the diana situation obviously sure. but it's like had she not been pushed into this this is where they were going to end up anyway. They should right? have. They this should is have, how, yeah. yeah, they were going to have a much more direct route <laughs> to it. Yes. And then, of course, we'd have different kids or whatever, but. <laughs> yeah, have... Very true. Very true. <laughs> yeah. But so um, it's like they're finally together. <laughs> Let yeah. It be. Yes, exactly. And they're in their 70s. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if this had <laughs> happened, like, you know just a few years after Diana passed or 10 years or whatever, like, I think it'd be a much bigger deal. It's been like 25 years. So I know, I right? Enough time has passed that we can let Camilla step in. <laughs> I agree. And he, I mean, he just must be elated because mm -hmm. there had to have been times that it was never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah. Yeah. So long live King Charles. Yep. That's right the third the third <laughs> I can see I remembered <laughs> yes I yeah I, well what's funny I did notice that like merchandise wise right I'm like oh yeah there's not as much cool like Charles stuff out <laughs> because the queen was like such a symbol and whatever she's like was either a pretty young lady or a cute old lady and it's like yeah put her on all the stuff <laughs> yeah but, like with Charles it's like there's only so much they could really do <laughs> I know as far as I merchandising I mean they don't have to it's not like they have to put his picture on everything but yeah I just thought it's like yeah there's less <laughs> stuff to pick from <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, you're absolutely right there's something cute and maternal and comforting about grandma queen sure it's about that dirty old man up there <laughs> there, there is right. you know um like maybe the profile maybe would do better than his actual photo. I don't know. Maybe. I think it's interesting. Um, but yeah, but I noticed you came back with more Elizabeth than you came back with Charles. I definitely, I know that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, really, it's like so much of the merchandise is still Elizabeth. It's yeah. either 
her longest reigning monarch stuff. It's uh, diamond. Well, actually, they still have lots of the different Jubilee things. But anyway, Platinum Jubilee. Uh, and then uh, what was the other one? Oh, well, I guess they, then they have ones where it's just like her whole span of time. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah, it's still heavily. Yeah, I, I found one set of mugs that was a Charles and a Camilla. I was very tempted to get it. And then I was like, well, but it was like my first day out shopping around. So I was like, I'll probably find something better. And then I never did. <laughs> so no. I never went. Back. So, but I'm just saying like out of all the queen stuff, right. And there were some King Charles things, but like to actually get Charles and Camilla, like on your mugs together, there's not a lot of them. Hmm. So uh, yeah, the, uh, I keep wondering if uh, my neighbor, I told her she's got a collection of I mean, she's got Andrew and Fergie. She's got um, Charles and Di, and she's got Harry and Kate. Will uh, I mean? Excuse, I said that wrong. Will and yeah. Kate, Harry and Meghan, and I showed I showed you that one. There, she also because I put that on an Instagram post where she has the one that's Harry and it literally is Harry and Kate. Yes. Um, I told her, hold on to that because it's going to be worth a fortune. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's so she's got all these commemorative plates and stuff like that from friends who have gone over there and, and gifted her with things. So, uh, but I kept asking her, I'm like, you going to get one for this? She goes, I don't know. I don't know. So um, she doesn't have any more room in her little curio cabinet for anything anymore anyway. So get like a tiny tea bag holder. Yeah. Something, just something, get the little plate. You can prop it up in the back. Nobody will see it. Right, right, right. So, well, oh gosh. Yep. This is wonderful. It <laughs> is. Um, I'm so glad you had such a good time. Thank I, you. I, I think you and I would just be so fabulous together in London. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would be drunk days. on gin, we'd be drunk on tea. Oh, we'd be like, yeah, yeah, right. Caffeine. Yeah, I was going to um, say, that, that should be how the first time we see each other in person should be in England. <laughs> that, would be <laughs> that would be so cool. That would be so yeah. cool. Where yeah, would yeah. we meet? Right in front of Buckingham Palace, right? Right in front of the Queen Victoria. Yeah, Statue. I think that's a good idea. I yeah, think yeah. That's a good idea. There, yeah. Right. There, yeah, I was saying, um, oh, I visited the Tower, you know, the Tower Bridge, which is my favorite place. Yes. Yes. Um, so we could we can meet in the middle of the bridge. Yeah, we could meet in the middle of the bridge. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see where okay, we so meet. You get a picture of you with a plain background going, you know. And I'm going to do the same thing. And we're going to send this to Sean and Sean can Photoshop us into. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> or that's just our face. We can find a picture of two other friends that look like. Right, right. Oh, speaking of Sean, I'll get to see you again on Saturday morning, right? It's our yes, yes, thing. Yes, yes, And I, yeah, yeah. I saw one of the snacks you were eating. Yeah, but this one, oh, so it's okay. We're so we're allowed to eat these. Just oh, I know not... I have been. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've been sharing that I, with thought the you, I thought you meant like you caught me like eating one early. And I was like, no, 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 no. Eat it. Okay. no, we're not doing this. But I have to say, so the sauces are good, but man, are they spicy. One of them in particular. That's why I won't cook with them. I can't handle spice. I can't do it either. I can't either. Um, and yeah, they're they're mm. so they, yeah. Uh, my husband and my boys, they, they can do it, but that is way too spicy for me. So, yeah, um, yeah. but, uh, but we, but we have them. Okay. Well, um, thanks for trying them. No, we did. I, I think, yeah. I think they'd be delicious on shrimp. Um, oh yeah. Um, chicken. I, it, some would be really, really good, but just, man, I couldn't do the spice. That's, I say you have to yeah, be able to handle Absolutely. Yeah, like the yeah. Indian spice to it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I might have Dave and Shabnam try them out since her family is Indian and they cook spicy things and Dave yeah. eats spicy things. <laughs> so I'll have them try it. it out. <laughs> I can't do it. My mouth burns on mild. So yep, same here. Anyway. Well, listen, so okay. June, mm -hmm. so swamped. So yeah. I, I would not be available to meet with you again until July. Um, okay. Our retirement is now just over three weeks away. Um, so, and it has turned into a, flipping. oh, is it, it's a wedding now it is, it is a, I had to get hotel room blocks. I have to, oh and, my gosh, uh -huh. it is a wedding. It is a wedding. Um, and so we're looking forward to it, but there's a lot going on. I still got to get cupcake toppers. I got to order cakes. I got to, 
um, Jose's boss opened his mouth in a Zoom meeting at, oh, no. um, at work and said, uh, I wasn't going to make it, but now I'm making it back. And you all better make it too. And you know, I would never miss cake. And Jose's like, I wasn't going to get a cake. So now oh. we got to get a cake and it's not just a cake. Now I have to get two huge sheet cakes from Costco to get yeah, yeah, yeah. For the plethora of people that are coming. And um, where are you hosting it? Um, so we are doing uh, the place that he works is where the ceremony will be. There's an auditorium. Okay. Um, and he's supposed to have a coordinator helping with him, not doing a thing. So Jose is doing everything on his own. Okay. Um, including everything he has to do to get ready to retire. Okay. Um, and then, uh, that evening we're going to a restaurant in Marina and we're having a, um, cocktail dinner type oh, thing. Okay. Um, I've already written a speech for him because this is also Aww. our anniversary. So I've got oh a my gosh. to go and I'm working on his gift, which he doesn't know about. That's great. Um, and I just, and then the next morning we will do brunch back here for family. Yeah. And then it will turn into a barbecue that night. I promise you. And then I got to get people back to airports on Sunday. <sighs> and yeah. Uh-huh. So and this is a wedding. I was like, and plus more because I'll say usually wedding stops at the brunch the day after yeah. but you still have another full day <laughs> so. another full day of family and it's like okay we're going to take William out of his room he'll go in Jackie's room Jackie can sleep on the couch in our bedroom we'll put an air mattress in Stephen's room sure my, my nephew Noah can sleep there my mom can sleep in William's room Jose's parents are down in the basement wow. if he, can, he can stay on the couch and everybody else gets a hotel oh my gosh and then I said, why don't we give everybody else the house and you and I stay in a hotel? Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's it's been huge. And we're still trying to plan for hopefully our retire moon anniversary. Uh, oh, yeah. Going to Ireland and London. Oh, yeah. And um, I don't know right now. My husband has injured his shoulder a second time. Oh. So we will be in this morning. And right. he may have surgery on his shoulder now. Oh. So, uh, well... <laughs> well if or i'll say not if whenever you get to take your retirement uh and you plan london let me know because i think that uh jane should meet up with you the english cream tea lady i oh. think you would love that yeah so meet up with you and then you can meet my friend claire too if you want <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure who they would have all that in mind yeah, no, oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, I guess it is a retirement. Like, it's what supposed, it's supposed, it's supposed, supposed to be about. Alone. Happy birthday, yeah. yeah. In the weeks. Yeah, no. Right, right. That's true. <laughs> now, I'm hilarious. thinking virtual war. I'm trying to think what he would enjoy and that I haven't seen. Um, I see he, he'd does, like the Tower of London, but you can do that nighttime Tower of London thing. Um, uh, what's the nighttime? I don't know. I've never oh, done yeah, that like you can go see where they do the, the keys or the turnover. It, it's something. Oh, cool. that's cool. Um, the Churchill War Rooms, I didn't get to see, but I've heard wonderful oh, right. things about that um and uh i mean of course you know you just walk the one mile radius you know yeah and, yeah, yeah. and you're like all the around the main sites um right so yeah i don't know um i told him yeah I, I would like to do tea somewhere and and i was thinking fortnum and mason possibly um yeah unless charles invites me over you know i, I, I know so <laughs> <laughs> well there'll be a that will be far enough and it like from the coronation that his schedule really should be freed up <laughs> No, and I wouldn't have Kate now. Yeah, Kate, you're like, Kate. yeah, you're like, sorry, I'm ditching you on the, the retirement. <laughs> Kate calls. Yeah, I'd, love, I'd love to have tea with Kate. I'd like to really see what's going on there. Something tells me, like I said, I, I, I get it's probably a bit of a snob at this point, but um, I think that's funny. Yeah, that you that you mentioned that that she might be a little hard. Yeah, to to deal with. I could see that. Be? Yeah, what yeah. You be? Yeah. I mean, that wardrobe at that, that point, body, you're going to be the next queen for crying right. out loud. I, I think I'd be a snob too. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> a pleasant one to be around, but sure. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all right. So, July, shoot me some July. dates. Yep. Things. Okay. Um, if you want to send teas, you and I have really gotten away. Uh, yeah, I was going to, I was going to. <laughs> I was going to say, if I, I mean, given that we're planning into July, that gives me like a month to get the and you'll wait the last minute and you won't do it. 
I know what to say, and I because I have the teas. I literally have teas to send to you that we can do. <laughs> like, do it. Well, I'm gonna send you a reminder every other day. Send me the tea. Send you me should. The tea. Yeah, yeah. Send Be like, I didn't. I didn't get an email from Houses of Windsor yet. <laughs> I don't have a tracking number. <laughs> so let me just say on my my take, what was this Highfield Cottage tea? Aside yes. from the absolutely precious, here's the bottom half of this precious, adorable box. You oh get, yeah. You know, all these teas. Um. I thought the English breakfast was really quite nice. Um, I thought the Earl Grey was good. It was um, strong on the citrus. Um, and the chai, I almost couldn't tell it was a chai. Yeah. My, the chais I've had have typically, typically been, um, they have more of a spice. And yeah, yeah. I not detect that, that here. Super, yeah, that was it's a super tame chai. Yes. But, but yes, they all, they all taste nice. They're all a pleasant cup of, cup of tea. They are all black tea. They are... Most yeah, so people. so we're like, yeah, they're great. They're black tea. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, don't complain, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it, it is nice. Our, our people, I'll say, are over in England, by the way, because like whenever I'd mention like, yeah, I don't like green tea, everyone would be like, yeah, I don't like green tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or what's this herbal stuff you people drink? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like a fruit tisane. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Give me just a tea bag of black tea. Yes, yes. So, and, and on a last note too, last episode of Ted Lasso tonight. Okay, and, I haven't watched end, end of the series. I know you don't. Right, right. You gotta watch is hilarious. It's so funny. Oh, and TV. Okay, next time, Queen Charlotte. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Queen Charlotte. Queen Charlotte. That it's so much better than Bridgerton. Okay, I gotta say it it's stands, what? it's. It's so much better. Oh, than, oh the show! I'm sorry, oh, you got to go the show. Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, sorry, not the little girl, not the, yeah. little, not the princess Charlotte. And like, we, we got to get through a couple of rounds before we get there. Yeah, 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 and, no, and no, yeah. Before her, but That's anyway, go ahead. Right? But yeah, uh, Queen, yeah, yeah, Queen Charlotte. Anyway, the show stands alone, way better than Bridgerton. It's really, really good. Claire and I got better into how? it. Better how? Better because it's not all romance. It's basically very much about, I'll say, royal politics gender politics like all of it's very much in the in the weeds of all that stuff okay. it's good all right yeah, yeah. i will have to check that out yeah so cool <laughs> all right well it is great to see you yes wonderful you to see pink? you again oh thank you <laughs> you, you look very nice and pink with your blonde hair thank you and my yeah. piper pink headphones yeah. <laughs> my strawberry headphones <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> anyway, well, I will see okay. you Saturday for the tasting. Yes. And, um, and then we'll figure out July. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. All right. All right cheery bye. Take care.